right, so I've gone ahead and opened the uh, outside of the Bronco Extreme box. So now um, it did arrive with some damage on the inside, and I uh, have some photos of that. I'm going to go ahead and cut the straps here. Most of the uh, staples on the top are loose. like the damage there, which went through the box, is lined up with a void. Oh no, I did mess up the deck. All right, I hope it's minimal damage. Here's the steering damper. Otherwise it looks pretty good. Suck that it got banged up and scratched up like that. So let's see if I can uh, get this out of the box. Now well, the box is empty. Let's see where something went through there. I'd say it's a forklift, but being vertical like that, don't know. So here it is out of the box. It is large. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Looks like dirt or dust. And here's that damage. Jeez, that was really torn up. It's kind of weird. Pretty sure this just drops down like that. That's actually a good amount of tension already. There we go. That's not straight. Sorry, that's gonna bug me. There we go. So, I think that's done. Okay, we go ahead and put the kickstand down and let's get rid of this block here. Uh, not sure what that's for. Some hardware. I'll look through the manual and see what that's just for. Of the rear adjustable shock. It's a DNM. Oh, this is really bad camera work. I apologize in advance. All right, let's see. We can get these handlebars. So how to do this is self-explanatory. It does say push here, but um, wasn't, wasn't doing anything. So obviously this needs to move out of the way. It was wedged in there pretty tight, which scuffed up both sides. Don't really like that. But nonetheless, there we go. Also, the user manual doesn't say anything about it. Here's a uh, quick page out of the manual with some details on size. But the thing is massive. I mean, 
is very large. Pro tip when you're um, first setting these up, do the, um, the light switch before you do the brake because now I need to get to that bottom uh, nut and I can't because the brake's in the way because I already did this. This is uh, new to me. Um, so the throttle is right here and your brake is right here. So I'm trying to figure out the ergonomics of being in this position. So without having my finger, I feel like this might get uncomfortable quickly. So if I move it here, but then you're in a situation where you're switching to brake like this. So I feel like you need some room. So you're in the riding position here, brake. So it's definitely like playing around with the position of this and how much you want to angle your fingers from here to here. What everyone says about the grips moving is 100% right. <clears throat> uh, they both do it. This one was actually um, about a centimeter out. So hairspray or some spray paint or something, be good to go. As promised, here is that uh, other box. Yeah. Battery charger, miscellaneous details about it. This is what came in the box. Let's see if you can make that out. There you go. So it looks like it is a 1.7 amp charger. So this is the uh, trickle charger, slow charger. Here's the side. The other side. And the cord. Oh, and it came with uh, an extra fuse, which is nice. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, Ben from Free Motion is who sent this to me, and it looks like he also sent some extra tires. This gets mounted to the stem and a fast charger. It's gonna be really appreciated. Thanks, Ben. So this is the fast charger that um Ben sent with the scooter. Big difference. So this one is five amps. One thing to note on the uh, fast charger is how short the cord is. The cord is probably about three feet, and it's not one that you can just uh, take out and uh, change. So keep that in mind when you're charging. So I really don't think I'm giving this deck the proper perspective, but to do that, <laughs> I don't know what else I can do, but I can tell you I'm a size 12, 12 and a half shoe. I mean, is huge. All right, it is uh, charging. I got the fast charger going. There is uh, two ports, so I'm just gonna confirm with Ben that I can cook up the uh, slow charger and the fast charger together. So this is a steering damper that came with the Bronco. Um, I don't see any instructions whatsoever on uh, how to install this thing, but I'm assuming this, which was left over, this bracket and all of these nuts and bolts, some of them are uh, to install this thing. i to figure that out. So I took the steering damper out. I actually had two brackets in that little bag. This was in the box. Here's the steering damper. I have to talk about installation of the steering damper because I don't see any instructions anywhere and I don't see anything online on the forums. But um, I'm looking at photos here and from a screenshot from a video here, so what you get in the box are these two brackets. So what I've done is, uh, this was the bag of nuts and bolts, and um, those two were the only bolts. And then there's these two nuts, so you have to presume logically that these go together. These are a lot larger than these. So what I'm thinking is that these two go through um, these here and this one here. Um, you can kind of see 
that there and on the back side there here's a more clear shot where it's the nut and bolt uh, going through so that's what we're going to try out and then I'm assuming all the rest are to mount the brackets to the uh, frame of the Bronco so we'll give that a go and see how it is all right so I'm just going to do a quick video showing me installing this thing um, based on the photos I see online so what it looks like is these go in here and I might have to redo all of this with some blue Loctite I'm gonna confirm with Ben and see what he says but for the time being I'm gonna install it like this gotta work with what I got I don't want to cross thread this either I mean that looks like it's going in straight but it is definitely not threaded uh, nicely all right there we go so we have some issue getting that in but just make sure not to cross thread all right so that's solid now let's get that other bracket i can't see too well in the photos but it does look like this bracket goes like this and I'm hoping that I'm not doing anything wrong by um, installing these first, because that would be really annoying if I have to take these off. All right, so this one threaded in just fine. It was just that one of the four that gave me problems. It's hard to get a good photo either, but it looks like these just go through like this. And they just tighten. Probably gonna need a wrench. Because that feels like I'm gonna need it. And then I'm not sure what these two are for. I'm gonna have to tighten this one down too. Hmm. I did open up this packaging and it uh, turns out this thing is a uh, little bell. So, this goes like that on your handlebar. All right, well, thankfully the uh, bell didn't have to get uh, slid down the, um, the uh, handlebar and I was just able to uh, undo the uh, screw and uh, sort of clamshell its way onto the bar because I did not want to remove all that. And now it's on there. It's super cheapy little thing, but it's uh, better than no bell. So I'm looking through the uh, user manual for the DNM suspension and um, found English. And I'm about 250 with uh, all my gear on. So I'm not sure exactly where I fall, but it looks like in increments of 20, it's going up 15 PSI. So I'm assuming I would just, um, uh, I could do 240 and uh, do 180 PSI in the main chamber, but uh, I might have to call DNM and figure that out. So this is what the uh, DNM shock in the back looks like. Um, if I got this right, these two uh, valve stem caps are, um, this is the main air pressure. And based on this, it looks like it has a maximum of 250. The negative air chamber recommended so I'm going to uh, go ahead and remove this one. And this is the uh, pump that they provide. Looks like it has a max of 300 PSI, so it should work. Um, I'll go ahead and do that and let you know how we go. So I hooked it up and it is reading right about 185, which is basically exactly where I would want it, uh, right around 180 for my 250 pound with gear on weight. So that's great. I'm gonna do just a little bit more and um, I'll be done with this one. So on the negative air chamber, just about 60 or so. Um, so this has a recommended pressure of 50 to 80. And based on my weight, um, I should definitely be close to that max. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it at 80 since it's the maximum. 
So this pump is very efficient. I just did one pump and it jumped up to about 75. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there just because I don't wanna go beyond the max uh, PSI rating. It's kind of tough to see on this thing, um, but I sent the uh, pressure on both the negative and main air chambers. Um, again, this is the negative air chamber. This is the uh, main air chamber. And the compression adjuster is this one. Um, it really feels like there's only two settings, but for rebound adjustment, it's kind of hard to see. But if you look under there, this one has a lot more finite tough to get to actually. Um, I wonder if it's easier up here. Uh, not really, but that's it there. And you can adjust the rebound and it has a lot more um, adjustability. Just really tough to get to the way this is designed. Got the go ahead from Ben to charge with uh, both fast and slow. I'm assuming you can do five amps to each port, but um, all you told me was that I could use a fast and slow, so, um, and I don't have a second fast charger, but we're cranking away with two now. All right, so while it charges, just gonna turn it on, see if I can mess with the P settings. Look at that. Not sure how it has uh, two kilometers already. <laughs> Unless they, uh, they tested it for two kilometers, but um, it looks pretty clean and crisp. I'm gonna mess with the uh, P settings now, and uh, I have the, in the manual, it gives you all the details there. So I'm gonna get this set up right. You know, I thought I was doing good. I installed the damper. Right? But what you'll notice is like this, I'm not able, I can go full lock this way, <laughs> but uh, that is the limit of my lock on the other side, because of how it's installed. What I noticed is that people are installing this both ways, um, with this end over here and this end over there, um, and then depending on where you have this, um, it enables you to go lock to lock, so I can figure out the sweet spot. I'll let you know. All right, so this is what I've determined. Um, the best way to install this, I think, is with this rod forward. Otherwise, you kind of have something that's poking out over here. And uh, heaven forbid you get into an accident, I feel like it's just a, uh, a uh, device that can cause some type of impalement or uh, some significant injury. So I've seen folks install it this way, and it seems to work fine. What I'd recommend is go ahead and turning to the left uh, full lock. If you see, there's still a little bit of room there. So I have this bracket loose. Uh, there's still some room here. This is um, a lock, not even from this bracket, but it's locking out. Um, I'm sure there's some sort of screw or something. So go full lock here and then hold this bracket in place and uh, go ahead and tighten there because then you should be good lock to lock. All right, so looking at this more, um, I think the plunger depth is a little shallow because if you look here, so I have this loosened so I can sort of play with it here. Um, the closer this is to the, uh, to the body, the uh, more that you have articulation to full lock. But then if we keep that there, um, I'm not gonna be able to do this and hold the camera at the same time. So, let me uh, just go ahead and here, I'll just go full right lock, which is there. You would need this rod. Sorry, this is hard to do with a, so this is full right lock. Now, I mean, I don't know if you'd ever make a turn that aggressively, but full right lock, this is the um, position minimum it would have to be. In order to get full left lock, it has to be almost touching this body. So it's kind of a balance on 
how far right you want to turn. So if, let's say we just needed that much, then we could bring this body a little bit closer and uh, adjust accordingly. So I guess it's a balance until we get a uh, dampener that has a little bit longer uh, plunger depth. So this is sort of where I've settled. Um, so this is my uh, current limitation to left and my limitation to the right. I try to basically make it about even. Now I'm not reaching full lock either way, but I don't know if it's really gonna matter. I'll really take turns sharper than that. I'll ride around and, and see if I need more adjustability. Um, but right now, the way this is installed, that's what sort of you're limited to. The uh, pressure on the front was 17 and the rear was 20, so definitely check your tires before you ride. Here's the other side. Looks like to replace the kickstand. You can see the two bolt heads in there. I'd probably have to take this panel off. A nice little touch that I haven't seen anyone else mention is this little piece of carbon fiber. Whether it's real or not, I don't know. It's really nice. I had removed a uh, plastic cover from the screen and then I noticed that there was a small lip of plastic still here and there's another plastic underneath the more rigid plastic. So you got two of them. Now you have a really shiny, clean screen. Let's turn it on and see what it looks like now. Ooh, pretty.